hello everyone uh, thank you for joining with me i'm sasindu alahakon software engineer wso2 and i'm going to discuss how to integrate front end applications with balana services in a simple and efficient way uh, leveraging the back end for front end design pattern bff design pattern so in this presentation i will discuss inbuilt rest graphql and websocket features in balana after that i will discuss some advanced features in balana regarding authentication and data mapping and finally i will do a demonstration with a real world use case of bff design pattern so okay uh, what is bff bff is back end for front end it is a design pattern where a dedicated back end service is created for a specific front end application customizing data and functional to optimize communication and user experience communications between front end and back end involve exchanging business data real time data streaming exchanging tokens for user authentication and authorization and many other things and mod in, in modern web and mobile applications use rest and graphql to efficiently exchange data between the back end and front end some applications like social chat apps uh, use websocket to real time data communication between server and front end in real time front end applications should also exchange authentication and authorization details with back end servers to ensure the security of the systems so let's discuss why balran is best solution for bff balran natively supports all of the above communication scenarios along with http graphql websocket and o2 capabilities using simple and intuitive programming constructs so let's see each of these details in upcoming slides so first Let's discuss how Balrana servers can be used to connect front end using REST API technology. A REST API is a standardized set of rules and conventions that enables communication and data exchange between different software applications over the internet. In Balrana's REST API implementation, uh, Balrana language has first class in Balrana language has first class abstraction for service and resource concepts in the form of service and resources. in here this is a service and the service can contain one or more resource functions a resource function consists of an accessor and a path a service can have collection of resource like this and also a service is defined with a base path the path the, uh, in the, this is a, the base path and this path is common to all resource functions this balrana design includes resource paths and path variables as first class elements of the function signature itself it eliminates the need of additional configuration or mapping to resource uh, path parameters and query parameters as well so this is an example of a path parameter in balrana's rest architecture right so in this path parameter can allow string int decimal float uh, those data types and this is the high level of the system that we implement in the right hand side you can see that this function gets the order id as a path parameter and outputs a order with that specific id if there is no order with that id it returns http not found status code this is an example of a query parameter in balrana rest we can configure the query parameter for a get request by just passing it as a functional argument so like this in the, in this diagram this function takes a status as a query parameter and returns the order list with this status Balrana supports accessing HTTP headers by using the HTTP header annotation like this. This header variable can be a simple type or an array type. If there is an absence of header in the REST API request, the Balrana server will return 400 status code. Balrana supports all HTTP status code like this. In this post resource function, it takes an order as request body and then it returns HTTP state code 201 created as the response. so any http status code can be represented as http colon then the status so if we need to represent the 200 status code it is represented in balrana as http colon okay similarly we can represent http colon bad request http colon any other uh, http status code that's as well so in balrana any kind of complex json payload can be mapped into balrana inbuilt record data type with that you can access payload attributes in a simple way in this program you can see that the nested json payload is mapped into this order record so we can access this id attribute with a simple way entry.id 
apart from json Bernard has first class support for payload binding with xml map type string type int and many other types as well so that's all for the basics of bff with rest in Balrena. now let's look at how front-end applications can communicate back-end services that are powered by Balrena graphql graphql is a query language for apis that allows you to request specific data in a more efficient and flexible way than traditional rest apis it enables clients to retrieve precisely the data they need from a server in Balrena, the graphql object structure is modeled using a service a Balrena GraphQL service contains resource methods that map to the fields of the GraphQL object and work as resolver function to provide its data. The GraphQL schema is automatically derived from the service structure and its resources. So this is a graph. This is a uh, example GraphQL service with two resources. The base path of this service is backslash sales. So the front end application first need to connect to this GraphQL service using this base path and then needs to communicate with this server using the GraphQL queries. These are the sample GraphQL queries for this service. This query will call the orders resource function and it returns a list of arrays of orders that contains ID, item, quantity, and the city of the address. And this, uh, this GraphQL query will call this resource function and it returns this attribute of the specific order. Now let's discuss some advanced GraphQL features supported by Balrena servers. Balrena GraphQL simplifies the life of developers by generating the GraphQL schema directly from the Balrena code. With this automatic schema generation, developers can focus on writing code, streamline development, and ensuring consistency between the schema and the code. So in the right-hand side, you can see the generated GraphQL schema for the Balrena code. Yes, the similarity between the GraphQL and the Balrena records is amazing. Balrena provides security features such as encryption, authentication, and authorization, which are essential for business that are dealing with sensitive data. In this example, you can see that Balrena GraphQL services can be secure with all 2 by just adding few annotations like this. Similarly, we can secure GraphQL services by using SSL, JWT, and transport layer security protocols as well. Now let's see how Balrena servers can be used to handle real-time data streaming with front-end applications. Everyone knows that real-time communication is essential in the modern software industry due to high user, expect high user expectations. Uh, WebSockets achieve, achieve this real-time communication by first initialize the connection through a handshake process. And once connected, the data can be flowed in both directions instantly. It allows real-time updates and interactions with the front-end and the back-end server. When the uh, communication is done, the connection can be closed gracefully by either client-side or server-side. So let's discuss how Balrena helps developers to achieve WebSocket connection in a simple way. The Balrena WebSocket library is an all-in-one package where you get all the features you need to work with WebSockets. Here, the WebSocket service initialized in port 9091 under the slash logistic base path. Then we can define the resource function inside the service in here, like this. In here, this uh, WebSocket resource function return a WebSocket service called location service. Inside the WebSocket service, there are a fixed set of remote methods that do not have any configuration. Some of them are on open, on message, on text message, on binding message, like that. As an example, this on open method will dispatch as soon as the WebSocket handshake is completed and the connection is established. And if we talk about this on message function, it receives messages that are dispatched to the remote method. Like REST and GraphQL, Balrena WebSocket library provides a whole bunch of security features starting from transport layer security, SSL, TLS2, application layer security, such as basic code, JWT, and O2 as well. Users can configure these security protocols by just adding few annotations like this. So, okay, that's the end of the Balrena BFF basics. So now let's discuss some advanced BFF features provided by Balrena. Now let's discuss how we can integrate Balrena server application with identity providers to make secure applications by providing authentication and authorizations. 
let's take Escadio as the identity provider example. So this is the high level diagram that shows how front end Escadio and Balna servers are interconnected with each other. When a user successfully logs into the system, Escadio will provide the access token to the front end server. So whenever the front end server needs to access the back end resource, the front end server should send this authentication token in the request header. Then the Balna backend server will validate this token by communicating with Escadio. If the user has permission to this resource, then the backend Balna service will allow the user to access the resource. So this whole story can be implemented in the Balna server by just adding few annotations like this. Developer needs to add relevant annotations with these attributes and then all validation, authentication, and verification done by Balna server itself. So like this, Balna server support any identity provider for authentication in your backend service with less number of code lines. Balna supports service and resource specific authorizations. Server level scope permission is applicable to all resources inside the service. But if there is a resource level specific scope, that means that resource is accessible if and only if the caller has those scope permissions only. Okay, now let's talk a bit about the Balrana Visual Data Mapper, which is very helpful when we are working with BFF design pattern. Balrana Visual Data Mapper is available through Balrana VS Code plugin that helps to convert existing Balrana data structure to another structure in a visual way. In the left hand side, you can see the visual mapping, while in the right hand side, you can see the generated code by the Visual Data Mapper. Okay, that's it. Uh, so now I'm ready to do a real world use case with Balrana BFF. Uh, so this diagram shows a high level view of what I'm going to demonstrate today. So assume that there is a large scale company who did their order management process through a desktop application. And now suddenly they plan to create a new web application to handle their orders. Uh, but the thing is they are not happy to create a separate backend to the web application because it requires more resources. So, but the problem is their backend server, this desktop backend server, send and receive large payloads, which is not suitable for web application because it requires high bandwidth. So, I need to help them to mitigate the solution, and uh, I I am planning to create a BFF server in the middle of web application and the desktop server that convert these payloads suitable to this web application. So this BFF layer is responsible for handling the communication between backend and the web front end by converting suitable data formats. And also as a new feature, they, the new web application needs to needs a new WebSocket server to handle the location of the orders in real time. So now I will show how they can handle in BFF scenario using Beltrano. So this is, I use the VS Code editor to uh, write this BFF server. So in this BFF server, it it requires to convert this uh, desktop server data type into a compatible type for web application. So let's do that. Uh, first of all, let's see the uh, implementation of the legacy desktop server. In here, you can see that it implemented on the REST API using REST API and it has three resource functions, orders and orders with a path parameter and this uh, this resource function as well. So uh, the this uh, desktop server returns a uh, order type as the response, which contains several nested types, which is uh, become a large uh, JSON payload. It returns a large JSON payload with nested record types. So when I'm uh, talking about the BFF server, that the server I, that I need to implement, uh, it requires it, it the, the sample response for this web board response should be something like this. It is a simple response format. But this backend des desktop server have a uh, response type like this. So my BFF layer should convert this response type into this simple response type. So let's start coding. So for this, first I have to create types to represent this uh, legacy desktop server response type and the new web, uh, web server response type. So for that, I will create two new records, 
two new two new records that represent the uh, desktop server data type and the web server data type. For that, I will use the visual editor in Ballerina. So I will use component and create a new record. Then import the JSON. For that, I will use the sample response type to create that new record type for the uh, desktop server response data. I will name this as backend response. And I will make separate record definition for these nested records to make it more readable. So, so now you can see that it creates a set of records and this is the main record. This contain this represents the response type of the legacy desktop server. So after that, now I will create a new, I will need to create a new record that represents the web response type. For that, I will take this sample web response and go to the visual editor and create a new record using this sample web response record. I will name this record as uh, web response. So you can see that it created a new record with that represent the uh, web response. So now types are created. So now let's start the coding the BFF server. So this BFF server should represent the desktop server. Like in, in, the, in this desktop server, you can see that uh, there are three resource functions. First one is to get list of all orders. And the second one is the get order with a specific ID. And third one is a get order that can owns by this customer and ha has the status of this query parameter. So my new BFF server should, should uh, contain these three resource, uh, should call these three resources and convert this data to the type that compatible with the web application. So first of all, I need to create these three resources in my web application, and then I need to implement the logic. So let's start the coding. For, so now for this, I will create a new service. For that, I will use the visual uh, editor again. In here, I can use uh, the service thing. And I will run this BFF uh, server in port uh, 1994. Uh, sorry, uh, the path is uh, slash sales. The port is 1994. Now, after saving, you can see that it creates a new service with base path slash sales, and the port is 1994 with a default resource function. For this scenario, I don't need this one, so I, I remove this. So now I have to create a three resource functions that represent those three resources. So let's create that using the uh, visual editor. So in here, I will create a new resource. The path is orders. It is a get request. There's no query parameter for this resource and no path parameter, but there should be two responses. First one is for successful scenario. It returns the status code 200 and the type is, uh, type should be web response array. And the second response type is for the failure scenario. It should be internal server error. Uh, there is no type for that, type name for that. So you can see that it successfully created this resource function. That path name is orders. And there is two return type, web response array and the HTTP internal server. So now I create this resource function uh, the, in the BFF server as well using the visual editor. Plus resource. The base path for that is, uh, so the resource path for that is orders. Then I need to add a new path parameter called ID. Like this. Uh, this is a get request. There is no query parameter for this resource function as well. And there is two uh, responses. First one is for the successful scenario. The type is web response. And there should be another response uh, type. This is for the failure scenario. In here, failure 
in the failure scenario, the response status code should be 400, zero, not found. So I will save this resource as well. So in here, you can see that we create successfully created this resource function as well. So I will create the third resource function using the visual editor. Uh, in here, you can see that the third resource function has path parameter and a query parameter. Query parameter name is status and the path parameter is custom ID. So let's create that path is customer, customers, uh, custom ID. And then orders. And there's a query parameter. It is a type of string. The parameter name is status. And it is a required one. And we need to add two responses. Uh, the first response type is a successful scenario. It should be a web response array. And the second response is uh, when there's a failure happen during this uh, data binding, or during this API call, it should be internal server. So like this, uh, I created the three resource function that I need to implement in this BFF server. Okay, now, uh, so what I need to do is, in this resource function, I need to call this legacy desktop server uh, resource function and collect the data from that and convert into this web response data format. So this will return, the desktop server will return a data response type of backend response, and I need to convert it into the web response type. So for that, we need a data mapper. So we need a transform function for that. So I can create this transform function using the visual editor as well. In here, we can use the data mapper option. So it asks the input type and the output type, uh, the name of the data mapper. I will name this as convert response, like this. And the input is a backend response. That means the response come from the backend. It is not array. So so our output type is the type that compatible with the web application. It is web response. So, so this is how the data mapper initiated. So now we have to map the data, uh, map, map the logic that how we convert this backend response type to the web response. So backend response ID should be mapped with web response ID. Uh, backend response. Uh, Ship ID, ship ship ID should uh, uh, map with web response ship ID, and the date should be mapped with the date. Status should be mapped with the status, and quantity should map with the quantity. Status should map with the status, and the item name item name should map with this uh, web response item. So, using the visual editor. I create the convert function, the transform function from backend response to the uh, web response. Uh, this is the data mapping function. So I can use these, this data mapping function to convert the desktop server data into our uh, into a response type that compatible with the web application. So now let's implement the logic inside this uh, resource function. So first, I, I need to uh, call the desktop server application and collect the responses from that uh, desktop server. For that, I need a HTTP client. So, so for that, I will create a HTTP client using the visual editor as well. In here, in the, in the connectors, I will search HTTP connectors. And in here, we can see the HTTP client. So I click the HTTP client and it pull, pull the HTTP package. And then here you can create a new HTTP client using the his base, uh, base URL path. So in here, the base URL path should be the desktop server uh, path. In here, it's, it is backslash sales in the 993 port. So I will create, I will, 
could be says HTTP localhost port is 993 like this. So you can see that this will create a new HTTP client that connect with this 1993 port in the local host, which is run, which is the port and the uh, host that is running uh, that is run on the desktop server. Desktop service running on the local host 1993 port. So I will hit this implementation to the top of the program to improve the readability, and I make this client as final. Okay, now we can implement our logic. So first, in this resource function, first we need to uh, collect the data from the desktop server. For that, we can use our HTTP client. This is our HTTP client. And using that, we can collect the data. We need to call that orders resource function, slash a slash orders resource function using the HTTP client. So this should be still return a uh, backend response array. In the uh, success scenario, in the failure scenario, it will return HTTP client error. HTTP client error. I will name this variable as res. So now we need to handle this error and we, in the success scenario, we need to convert this backend response to web response. So let's handle the successful scenario first. So if res is a backend response array, what we need to do is we need to convert it, uh, we need to iterate through this array and convert each backend response to the web response. So let's return. I will use a query expression in Balrna to iterate through this backend response array. select keyword i will use this convert response which, which i uh, created earlier to convert this backend response into a web response like this so this code will successfully iterate through this backend response array and convert each backend response element into a web response element so this is to this is for the successful scenario for the error scenario we need to return HTTP internal server. Like this. Because of this is a demonstration, I will just return HTTP internal server for every uh, every error kind of situation. For in a real world application, you can filter this error. Uh, if this is a something like a like uh, if this internal server, you can return internal server. It, if this is something like a bad request or something like that, you can return HTTP colon bad request like that. For this demonstration purposes, I will just return internal server for all kind of errors. So now let's fill this resource function as well. In here, this resource function will must need to call this resource function and get the result and convert it into the into a web response data type. So let's do a similar thing what we did in the previous example we use a resource function we need to call slash sales slash orders then we need to provide the uh, path parameter like this and this will return backend response for http Enter. I will name this variable as rest. So now in here we don't need to iterate because this is a just one response. So we need to handle the successful scenario like this. Rest is like response. We just return the convert response function with the parameter of rest. And in the failure scenario, we just return HTTP dot sound. Like this. So, like I said earlier, uh, for this demonstration purpose, I will return HTTP not found for every error scenarios. 
in a real world application you can filter out each errors and return the relevant status code okay now let's complete this resource function as well so in this resource function also we need to first collect the data uh, by calling the desktop server application using our client connect the client http client here it is slash sales slash customers and then customer id as a path parameter then orders now we need to provide this query parameter for that what we do is this is a get request so dot get and then name of the query parameter and then value and here it is status and from this variable like this then i will assign this a similar way what i did in the first resource function i will assign this into a backend uh, response array or a http client error type and name less rest now i will handle the successful scenario and error scenario similar way that i did in the first resource function so this this function will iterate the each element in the backend response array and convert it into a web response so that's it this is how we implement uh, this bff server so this bff server will get the data from this desktop server the legacy desktop server and convert it into a web web application friendly format with a less number of uh, fields and return that uh, response to the web application so i think uh, you got to understand about how to implement bff using rest with balrena uh, you can see that it's a, a less number of code like most of the things are we did using the visual editor so low code uh, implementation uh, then what, uh, what 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 i'm going to do is i i will implement this websocket server as well so for that i uh, we can use this already implemented code so with this uh, so for this websocket server for this websocket server we need to create a new service with websocket listener the port i i use the port as 1996 and the base path as last logistics so in here there's a one resource function that is responsible for getting the location of orders so this is the resource function that returns the location real time locations of orders so this return new location service and inside the new location service there's a method for on open this this method is uh, called when the connection is got established so when the connection is established this on open method will create a new strand and allocate the uh, location uh, send the location details to the client to a new strand so so this on open will create a new strand and allocate it to send the uh, location to the client so this is the logic that used to send the order location to the client B because of this is a, a demonstration purpose i use a random numbers as the location so yes so that's how we implement the websocket so if you need another resource you can create another resource in here also and uh, apart from on open you can use on message when there's a message dispatch you can call that function the call it, the function will be called it's like on open on message on binary message on text message like that there are several methods in this uh, websocket service class as well so that's it uh, that's how we implement uh, that's how we implement this websocket server and bff server using balrena bff so i will show you uh, so let's run our program We'll navigate to the bff server then i command bell run so when i call the bell run this uh, bff server and the websocket server will up then in here you can see the front end application so in here you can see that the locations are updated in real time so this is happened with this uh, websocket server and also you can see that like uh, we can filter a customer 
based on the ID and the status. Uh, and we can view a custom. I will show you a, a sample response. In here, network tab, I go to the network tab, network tab and show you. In here, when, when I call this view, view order, view order use case, you can see that the response is this. This, this is a simple response, right? So this is not the response that come from that uh, desktop server, the large response, because BFF server convert into a simple web-friendly format. So like that, uh, this is so. So like that, this is how we implement uh, the BFF using REST and uh, REST. This is how we implement the BFF scenario using REST, and this is how we implement the real time communication of order locations using WebSocket. And also, I will show you how to implement the same thing we done in the uh, same BFF thing we done with the REST. How, how we implement in GraphQL in Balrena. So in here, I implement two functions. Uh, so in here, uh, it is similar to the what we did in the REST, but it is we instead of a HTTP listener, we use a GraphQL listener. So in the, this GraphQL listener run on 1995, and the base path is slash sales. And this has two resource function. First is order and orders, and second one is get orders. So in here also, like we can do the same thing. Uh, the, the uh, converting part, the large payload into a small payload uh, in this logic as well. So I, I will uh, show you uh, this GraphQL thing in this visual editor, visual uh, GraphQL visual, GraphQL, GraphQL uh, page. So in here, you can see that there are GraphQL resource function orders. I will show sample query for that GraphQL resource function in here. I use the query as orders and four uh, attributes. When I run this, you can see that it uh, send me these four attributes. If I need only these three, I can get these three as well. And if I want to uh, run this, uh, I, if I want to execute this resource function using a GraphQL query, I can do it by simply get order. And there is a parameter ID. You have to provide that. Sample load ID. And that is like this. So this is how we implement the BFF scenario in, uh, in GraphQL, Balrena GraphQL. And this is how we implement the same scenario in Balrena REST. And this is how we implement a WebSocket server for real world communication, real time communication. So I think now you got an idea about how to implement a BFF server using simple BFF server using Balrena REST, GraphQL, REST and GraphQL, and how to implement a real uh, time communication system using Balrena WebSocket. So uh, that's it for the demonstration. Uh, it is time for answering your questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask now. Yeah, you can learn more about Balrena BFF from the following resources. Uh, we have Balrena BFF example repo and Balrena use case page. Uh, and a Bal we contain uh, so many Balrena examples in the Balrena by examples. And also join our Discord, Balrena Discord server, and ask your questions via Balrena WSO2 Stack Overflow Collective. And uh, follow us on Twitter and stars on GitHub. Thank you.